Episode 105, Don't Worry. After a few more words, the boarding gate opens. Zack and Tess were not on the same flight, so he got up to say goodbye to her and took the plane ticket to the boarding gate. Bye-bye. After the bye-byes, Tess watched Zack get up and leave. She felt that Zack would turn around later and leave her with a phone number or Twitter handle in order for her to contact him in the future. Furthermore, she had already made up her mind and decided she wanted to leave a message for Zack because this man, who did not treat her as a celebrity, was really good. Whether it was chatting or getting along with her, she was very relaxed. However, in reality, Zack didn't even turn his head when he walked to the boarding gate and queued up. Tess fiercely kicked her luggage and muttered in a low voice, Who is this guy? I have already thought of a way to let you add me on Twitter, but in the end, you simply ignored me? How infuriating! Zack really did not have the intention of leaving with Tess's contact details. She was just a little female celebrity. No matter how popular she was, she was just an actor. After going on the plane back, it was already past 2 o'clock in the morning. Zack took a taxi to the hospital first, then drove his car back home. When he arrived downstairs, he smoked a cigarette outside the car and finally returned to the car. Putting down his seat, Zack slept in the car and did not go upstairs. After sleeping for an unknown period of time, he suddenly heard the sound of the window being knocked. Zack, who was woken up, opened his eyes and took a look. Then, he saw that person knocking on the window was Kate. After opening the car door, Kate asked, When did you come back? Why didn't you go upstairs to sleep? Zack rubbed his eyes and yawned before replying, It's too late. I was afraid that the sound of the door opening would wake you up and affect your rest. He spoke very naturally, as if he was talking about something very ordinary. However, Kate could tell from the very unordinary matter that Zack had strong feelings for her. With red eyes, she said, Are you stupid? Why are you so good to me? You are always thinking of me. He reached out and touched Kate's beautiful face. Zack smiled and said, Who asked me to like you? Kate looked even more moved. Tears almost flowed down her face. Zack hugged her charming little face and kissed her gently. Kate, if you are really touched, then do something to me tonight. You know what I want. Kate naturally knew, so she was very shy. She pouted and gave Zack a punch, but she was not willing to use force. Go back and sleep. I will go to the company first. After shyly leaving Zack's car, Kate turned around again and clenched her little fists to threaten Zack. You are not allowed to go to the company today. Rest well at home. If you dare to go to the company, I will break your little neck. A very empty threat. It was like a little dog barking. There was no real threat. Instead, it was full of cuteness. The more Zack looked at Kate, the more he liked her. He leaned on the steering wheel and asked Kate, Kate, why do I like you so much? Kate glared at Zack shyly, but in her heart, she was happy as if she was filled with honey. I ask myself that same question towards you. After saying that, Kate left quickly. After returning home, Madison roughly told her about what happened last night. I only cut off Nathan's hands, but Claire killed Nathan afterwards. This is a coincidence. I had not planned for that. Madison's coincidence meant that this matter had nothing to do with her. But Zack knew that Claire must have targeted Nathan a long time ago and had not found a reliable opportunity. All right, after getting rid of Nathan, he would feel more at ease leaving this time. But as for the Drenly group, Zack gave Larry a call. After I leave, if the Drenly family have any bad intentions, I'll just destroy them. Understood. Don't worry, boss. After resting at home for half a day, Zack went to the company in the afternoon. He had to go because the lawyer had just called him. Kate had already transferred 60% of the shares to him. This also meant that he already had become a 100% full capital boss of Dream Group. This was strange. Why did Kate transfer the shares to him? Zack thought that there was something wrong with Kate, but he did not expect Kate to give a simple answer after seeing her. Because I am your woman, 
What is yours is mine, and you are more suitable to be the chairman than me, unless you don't want me. Zack could not reject these words, but he could understand Kate's thoughts. You want to transfer all the shares to me, and you aren't worried that I will not come back, right? Don't worry, I can bear to part with the dream group, but I can't bear to part with you. This sentence made Kate's face turn red, and it was extremely intoxicating. In the following days, Larry was in charge of the company, and Lewis was in charge of the finances. Zack didn't need to worry about this at all. After Kate had achieved small success with Lewis, she was ready to wholeheartedly learn management from Larry. But before that, she still had something very important to do. Zack, I have to leave for a period of time and go to my hometown to take care of some business. Kate had mentioned this before when she was chatting with Zack. She had supported a poor village all these years. The name of that village was Georgetown, a small village next to the mountains. It was only two years ago that it was connected to tap water. It was quite a poor town. To understand how poor this town was, the median income for a family of five was about $600 a month. This barely made ends meet. Once a child was old enough to work, they would work in order to provide for their family. Any family outside the town would be considered rich as most jobs paid more than the low wages in this town. Kate had also earned some money these few years, but the surplus had been donated to Georgetown. So the village had tap water and the students lived in a new school dormitory, but Kate did not have a house. When he heard that Kate had been donating a portion of her funds to this town, he said to her, let's go together. He felt that it would be a good thing for Kate to understand his upbringing a little bit. Kate thought about it and said, If we both take a vacation, who will be left to run the company? Zack smiled. What do you mean? We have Larry and Lewis. There is nothing to be worried about. With Zack's words, Kate naturally did not say anything more. Furthermore, she did indeed hope that Zack would accompany her. It was not to truly show off, but to let the man she liked to see how brilliant the things she did were. It could be considered as showing off in front of the man she loved. After agreeing to go to Georgetown, Zack told Larry and Lewis about the matter. Larry said it pretty well. Director Marquez, don't worry. When you come back, if the company changes, then it will be for the better. Lewis's words hurt people. Please go. I can finally get some peace and quiet. You two always cause me issues. Being the boss was really awkward. That night, Zack and Kate drove the Mercedes-Benz G63 over. After a day and night, they finally arrived at the village.